In today's episode, we are going to be discussing a very important aspect of programming, debugging your code. Now, let's say you have written a program. You think it's ready, and you are ready to test it. You've been working hard on this, and you're excited to see it in action. You run the program and wait for it to run smoothly and efficiently. Only, it doesn't work. It simply isn't doing what you want it to do. You need to fix this, but how? You read over your code and thought it was perfect, and you have no idea where the problem is coming from. How do you fix it? This is where debugging comes into play. Sometimes your code doesn't work. It may be due to an error, but it may not be. The code just may be running in a way that, while error-free, is not the way that you intended it to run. If the code is giving you an error, the first thing you should do is read the error, see what line or lines it points to, and see if you can understand and fix what it says the problem is. If the error isn't clear, then try Googling it, as there are many websites out there such as Stack Overflow, which serve as forums to ask and answer problems with code. Chances are, if you've had a problem, someone else has had the same issue and there's likely a tested solution. Usually, when an error pops up, you should be able to find a fix for it fairly easily. However, as I said before, the issue may arise from some loophole or oversight in the code you hadn't planned for beforehand. These are logic errors we talked about in the previous episode. These problems usually won't have red text show up to explain to you what went wrong. You'll have to figure it out for yourself. Before I get to what you can do once the problem has arisen, let me explain some good practices to make dealing with bugs easier. Firstly, back up your code frequently. In the event of the code completely bugging out and you being unable to fix it, you want the ability to revert to a previous version where the code was still working. If you save frequently enough, then you will probably not lose too much work. Version managers such as GitHub or Subversion can help with this. Also, on top of saving, run your program frequently to ensure that the current version works as intended. This accomplishes two things. First of all, it prevents you from saving a backup that doesn't work. Secondly, if you encounter a problem, it will be easier to find if you've only made a small number of changes since last time you ran it and it worked, and thus you will only have to look through the new code for problems. If you spent five hours coding and hadn't run it during that period, it's going to be extremely hard to figure out what went wrong if it doesn't work when you run it. Now let's get to what to do in order to track down and fix a bug. Firstly, you can use print statements in the console in order to determine where the code is going wrong. Imagine you have a conditional statement that will do one thing if an integer x is greater than 5 and will do something else if not. If x is supposed to be greater than 5 when that program reaches this conditional, to make sure this is true, you can use a print statement. Place said print statement in the if x greater than 5 branch on the conditional, saying something like x is greater than 5. If the console does not display this message upon passing through this if else statement, then clearly something is wrong. You can also print out variables you would like to know the value of at different sections of your program, such as x in this case. Use print statements to determine where your program goes wrong, and then try to track down the cause of these issues and solve them. If you use this strategy, make sure to end up deleting the print statements afterwards to avoid clutter in the console. The situation described above can also be solved using a breakpoint. A breakpoint pauses your code when it is reached in your program. If, say, you would like a program to call a function you've written, more on that in another video, but you are unsure if this actually happens, you can place a breakpoint inside the function. Upon the breakpoint being reached, the program will pause and wait for you to continue it. This signals that the spot in the code where the breakpoint was placed, in this case the function, has been reached by the program. Breakpoints can be used in conjunction with print statements in order to both pause the program and perhaps view the new values of your variables at that moment in time to give yourself all the information you could want. A combination of these two strategies will help you easily determine where in your code you've messed up. Finally, let's go over what to do if you think you've tracked down the section of the code that causes the problem. You may think you should delete it, but it's likely you put that there for a reason, and you don't want to lose all that work if you don't have to. Firstly, try commenting it out. Comments are used to mark up code and explain their surrounding sections, but they can also be used to debug. Anything that is designated as a comment will not be read by the program as code and will be skipped over. Essentially, it becomes something that is only there for you to read. The syntax varies from language to language, but it usually involves placing some symbols before or around the code you'd like to be commented. Commenting code deletes it in the computer's eyes without actually deleting it. If a problem is present before you comment a section of code but is gone afterwards, then that is a section of code that is the culprit. The best part about a comment is that you can tweak and edit the commented code without having to start over from scratch and uncomment it once you want to test it. If you comment a part of code out and there are still issues, then move on to another section until you find the culprit. Once you do, you can tweak it until it works as intended, and you'll have a fully functioning program once again. That's all for today's episode, folks. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing and check out the playlist to the right for the rest of the episodes in the series. Stay tuned for next episode when we go over functions. Thank you for watching.